Yeah. Later. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's not that bad. It's all right. Y'all see the question posed <laughs> to you. In Brick out there, baby. Oh, man. Y'all see the question? I'm gonna just hop right in it. <sighs> like I told y'all, I mainly do this for myself. These lives that wouldn't have and what have you. And it was like, it's the same old story, man. Prominent black people. Black people in general, you know, they can never stay. You know, I'm not saying they can never. Why don't they ever stay unified? Man? It's always some ego shit or some nonsense that causes them to have the falling outs, especially in this day and age of social media. And you have um, different individuals with various agendas and various platforms. <clears throat> Everybody wants to be the number one. Everybody wants to be the dominant. Everybody wants to be the alpha. Everybody wants to be the one. I'm the one that started X, Y, Z. I'm the one that began this movement. You should respect me. And I'm the only person that should be talking about whatever. Pay homage, you give it. Give me respect, the props. I'm the one that blah 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 blah. <clears throat> She's fucking childish, man. And these are grown adults, man. Mainly, what I'm alluding to is the. Uh, I just saw a video, of how depressed, like two of them. Umar Johnson coming at Tariq Nasheed, basically saying that Tariq Nasheed. Uh, plagiarizes intellectual property and how in uh, Hidden Colors 1 and 2, which Umar Johnson was in, which was produced by Tariq Nashi, Umar was interviewed three hours. I'm assuming he probably was interviewed for that, amount, for that amount of time for the first one. So let's say he was interviewed for six hours for two movies. His, his argument is like, Listen, first of all, he claims he didn't even know he was going to be in those movies. He claimed he was just, you know, uh, being interviewed for some type of Moorish, whatever, project or whatever. And it took one of his boys to be like, yo, I'm watching uh, Hidden Colors Part 1, and you want to you want the move screen in the theater. And, and then Umar was like, what? I didn't even know I was in that flick. Whatever. But even with that type of stuff, don't you got to get releases? Like, how could you not know you're going to be in some shit? But I digress. You know what I mean? I just did a, a production early in the year. I did two different productions. I know what's coming out. I signed releases for both both of them. You know what I mean? I'm not going to just randomly just be in a movie. Uh, or, you know, people filming me, but I don't know that they're going to release that shit as, like, some type of film project. But I digress. I'm not even going to talk about that. That shit sounds like some bullshit. <clears throat> Supposed to be intelligent. You got to be smarter than that. If you're doing all kinds of interviews and people are doing documentaries and you, you don't know that you're going to be on a um, big screen, I don't know. But anyway, Umar was basically saying that uh, Tariq Nashi wasn't even really the anti-white uh, supremacist champion that he is now until he heard a lot of uh, Umar Johnson's ideas. Now, to an extent, Umar may have a point because prior to the Hidden Color series, I don't recall, Tariq was more about the Mac, he was more about relationships, I'm not saying mad, but just relationships between human human beings, male and female in general. That that was his main shtick, and he did, 
movie did seem to take kind of a turn once once the hidden colors popped off and did real good uh you know what i mean i don't know if he was passionate about it and this is what he's championing or if he saw dollar signs and he he was profiting more from that or it could have been a, could have been a combination of both who knows but it, 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 it's, it's, it's definitely true that uh Tariq had one one agenda or one way of speaking and then that changed after the hidden color series but anyway umar was basically saying okay you interview me, interview me for this long, but you only use a portion, a small fraction of what I we, we spoke about. And now, when I hear you talking, I hear your ideas. It's basically <laughs> all of my talking points verbatim. You know, he, he, he's uh, Umar claims that Tariq used those interviews like the material that he didn't use to basically help formulate his mindset and how he's presenting himself now. With the Melanoid Nation and etc. But my thing is, if Umar had a problem and thought these things, instead of saying instead of saying in front street, why not just confront confront, you know, sit down with Tariq, break bread with him, y'all talk about it, hash things out behind the scenes. Y'all both leaders, man, to an extent. Y'all might not profess yourselves as being leaders, but people do follow you. So by default, that makes you a leader of a whole bunch of people to follow you uh, and, and, and investing their time listening to you and putting money into your pockets and holding on to every word that you say, then by default, that makes you a leader. Especially black leaders. It's not that many of us, man. So if we have the issues with, with each other. To me, these are things that should be dealt with behind the scenes. Like, I've had beef with certain dudes on the internet and stuff like that. But I never, you know what I mean? Me personally, I don't. I never try to put dudes on blast and stuff like that. I try, I try to handle that shit behind the scenes, man. It's other races that see plenty of black people always fighting and warring against each other, enough as it is. So if you can handle that shit in the house, behind the, behind the scenes without people even seeing that shit, then why not? Why not approach it in that manner? But see, this, this is the thing. These dudes are pro wrestlers. And I'm gonna get on Tariq's side real quick. I'm gonna talk about his point, points or whatever. These guys are pro wrestlers. You understand what I'm saying? These dudes, they do YouTube, they do Facebook, they do various forms of social media. The more clicks and hits they get, the more donations they get money. It's, you know, and I respect the hustle. It is what it is. You, gotta, you know, so if there's like a fresh controversy, for co fresh controversy, hot off the press, you're gonna have that much, that money, um, that many more people. You're gonna draw that much more traffic. Excuse me. And traffic equal equates to revenue in this day and age of social media. That's that's just uh, facts. If you know how to properly monetize it, which they both do. Now on Tariq's end, and it's kind of like the same shit with Tommy. It's like, yo, this dude looked kind of suspect from the beginning, but I still gave him a shot. Like Tariq complimented him. He said, he said Umar is an excellent speaker, but he's shady as fuck. He doesn't deliver on what he says. He's great at you know the verbals and the theatrics and you know getting you pumped up, inspired, and feeling good and blah 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 but he doesn't really have an end game this is what Tariq says and then he said oh you look kind of shady from the beginning but you know I, I still gave it a shot and he was talking about how in Hidden Colors Part 1 Umar Johnson had a big ass herpy on his lip and then Tariq was saying how he had to spend thousands a couple of thousand dollars just to use, do some animation to or to change the lighting well, that's, that's an exaggeration too you don't gotta fucking pay thousands of dollars to do that but why not just cut him out cut him out if he, if, if, if he looks that sickly and that bad why not cut him out why not cut him out of the film you know what i mean like you, you talk about it you talk about this shit now so all these years you feel like he had herpes but you was bigging him up and you never said at least say something to him behind the scenes even when he was on set if you're a professional if you if you're in a movie studio somebody got some shit wrong with them the director gonna say the, the, the director ain't gonna let that shit rock and, and, and then spend mad extra money when they could have just put some makeup over the shit or whatever. Like, come on, man. I don't believe that shit either, yo. I don't believe that fucking shit. Bullshit. But Tariq, uh, his, 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 his rebuttal was hilarious, though. Like, he was saying how... <laughs> when Umar Jaws would be talking, he'd be sniffling, and, <laughs> and his eyes be big. <laughs> like, see, yo, I'm the Prince of Prince of Pan-Africanism, and I'm the best. I was related to Frederick Douglass. And, uh... And, uh, and uh, I'm Martin Luther King, and I'm gonna be the new age prince. <laughs> like this, the way. 
Yo, the, the way uh, Tariq was clowning, like, Tariq got the comedy shit. Like, when it comes to roasting motherfuckers, Tariq is up there, man. That, you don't want to get in a roast session with Tariq Nasheed. That shit is hilarious. But anyway, if you knew the dude was grimy, you know, you saw all these things that was bad about him, man. Why would you uh, include him in part two? When you say, so you said, oh, by the herpes on his lip, you could tell he probably messed with some thoughts, some holes, or whatever. So when it came out that Umar Johnson was having sex with a country stripper, he got played by her. He said, ah, that makes sense, which is a good connection to make, or whatever. But, I don't know, it seems like one of those retro retroactive um, conclusions. It's like, okay, now you see this shit, so you're going to use some shit from the past to make the connection. I don't know. But, you know, man, so Tariq would just basically call them all fat, fat niggas and shit, and saying how he'll tie him up and slap his titties. Yeah, he should have said pause when he said that shit. That shit was funny, though. He said, nigga, I will tie this nigga up and slap your titties, nigga. He was calling him, he said he was built like Gabby City Bay. He called him County, called, he said he was built like Countess Vaughn. Oh, my God. Then Tariq was saying how Umar, he talked with, with the hat, with the ball on top of it. He's like, yo, I, I could have sworn every time he, he shook his head, the hat was jingling. He was like, chilling, chilling, chilling. He's like, listen, I'm the Prince of Pan African Italy. Chilling, chilling, chilling. And I'm going to build the school. Chilling, chilling, chilling. Like, so Tariq Mainly was just roasting them and basically saying, if you're going to fight. And that's another thing I don't like. When, it, when, when these prominent dudes in these positions, these motherfuckers is not going to go out and fight. It's like the old Tommy and and Tommy, um, Tommy and Tariq situation. These, why talk all this shit like he about to really set it and, and punch somebody in the face and come on, man. You do some shit like that, the right people see it, you're going to jail. You don't talk about doing some shit like that. You just do it. You let the cards fall as they may, but it's entertainment. And Tariq was saying all kinds of how you gonna slap the Kofi off his head and X, Y, Z. And from what I heard, Tariq, in this situation, Tariq was being quiet about it for years and um. They showed examples where um, Umar Johnson would throw subtle shots, and that's and you know you know and, and maybe it was a subtle shot. Maybe that's just the way that's that's just the way Tariq took it. Just like Tommy a couple of years they, they they Tommy and Tariq was kind of throwing subtle shots at each other, but that, they could have just had a conversation behind the scenes and just left it like that, and it would have never blew up into the bullshit that that is blown up into. But anyway. I don't really blame Tariq and Rizvan the way he did because because. Because Umar is the one that pretty much called him out and put it on tape. You call somebody out, I mean, it's only right that they're going to respond back. Do I agree with the way Tariq responded? Nah. Not necessarily, but, you know, that shit was fucking entertaining as fuck. And I enjoyed, <laughs> and I enjoyed every moment of it. But it's like, we can't never unite. That shit is crazy. I said this years ago. When Tommy Sotomayor hit the scene, he seemed like he was about to be the leader between all those motherfuckers. He seemed like he had it, like, because at one point, Corey Holcomb was cool. And at one point, Zoe Williams was cool. And at one point, my, Jeff Brown, that's my nigga right there. My nigga Jeff Brown was cool with him. And at one point, Jason Black was cool with Tommy Sotomayor. At one point, Tariq Nasheed, to the point people would call Tariq Nasheed trying to shit on Tommy by saying for certain things. And Tariq would back Tommy and not be like, oh, it's cool, that it's okay, that, that's, his, that's his perspective, whatever. So at one point, Tariq Nasheed. That's like the six, and like a lot of like people that hate Tommy, they used to like him at first. But the point I'm trying to make is they had this one particular show, right? And it was in LA, it was when Tommy was in the, the quote unquote struggle mansion, as uh, Tariq would put it. And it was like sunset in LA. I forget the, um, I don't know exactly where it were. But you had like a round table. You had Zoe Williams, you had Tariq Nashi, you had uh, Jeff Brown was there, you had Tommy Sotomayor. So you had the four of them. And then later on during the show, Jason Black called up. So we got all five of the motherfuckers. That, yo, I love that show. And I was like, oh shit, this is like the Justice League of Negroes. They about to do some real big shit. They all got different perspectives. They all have different different ways of viewing things. I don't think I don't think Corey was on that show. Corey Hogan wasn't on that round table or whatever. But I was like, oh my God, this is about to be beautiful. But something told me, I was like, yo, but all these cats got egos, it's gonna take some type of bullshit to just drive a monkey wrench in between it. And then Tariq started beefing. Um, Tariq started beefing with Tommy because a caller called in and asked Tommy why doesn't Tariq Nashi mention like the Jews' involvement with the transatlantic um, transatlantic slavery. And Tommy was like, he was like, honestly, you could you could ask him, but he did. I said I, I found I, I found it kind of strange that he didn't, he didn't mention he's talking about slavery, but he doesn't mention the Jews' involvement in part one. 
and he doesn't mention it in part two. I said, maybe he'll get it right in part three. He said, but Tommy got a way of saying things that he could have said that in a smooth way, or he could have just left it at Axe to read. And that's it. He could have just let, he could have just left that shit at that. You don't gotta, I mean, it's good to be transparent, but you don't gotta fucking say every fucking thing. You gotta put some type of filter on yourself, man. You're gonna burn all your bridges. That's just life. But anyway, he said that. Tariq took it as a slick this and shit like that, so. Tariq went in and then made the crispy puppets and they've been fucking going at each other for years. Now, Tariq started beefing with Jason Black. I think it was over, I, 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 I want to say it's over Melissa Speaks. I don't know the, the specifics of it, but from what I heard behind the scenes, like when uh, Tommy used to date Lana, the white chick or whatever, the Russian, Jason Black was saying you should probably fall because like Tommy was kind of leaning more towards like a black leader type situation. So Jason Black was like, maybe you should fall back a little bit and let this shit die down. And Tommy took it as Jason Black trying to take his spot or whatever. You know what I mean? So they started having a fallout, slick this and doing their thing. And, you know, Melissa Speaks was beefing with Tommy and Jason Black or whatever. So they, they fell out. You know, it seemed like behind a woman, but they fell out behind that shit. You now Tommy fell out with Zoe Williams because apparently one of their co-hosts, Tommy smashed or maybe had some type of involvement or relationship. And um, Zoe Williams and Corey and what actually Corey joked about it because he got wind of it, but he joked about it on the, on the show. But they was just joking. It was all lighthearted. I think in this in instance, Tommy kind of kind of blew up or whatever and went overboard and kind of overreacted. But anyway, it did. It happened again. So he now he, he beefing with Zoe and he went so hard at Zoe. Zoe and Corey is best friends. So by proxy, he beefing with Corey and he beefing with Jeff Brown. But eventually, Corey apologized to Tommy. Tommy seemed like he didn't really take too well to the apology, or whatever. But whatever. So that's that instance. Then he had to beef with a crazy. That's my other nigga from New York, Crazy 100. Tommy be beef with crazy because just over some misunderstanding, misunderstanding the words. That shit was some bullshit. And just like a host of others. But the point I'm trying to make is all these prominent black men in this YouTube, or you know, not, not YouTube, just in social media in general. They like the smallest shit, kind of set them off, and. They just don't fuck with each other anymore. They want to trash each other, talk all this shit. It's like, yo, if you if you guys are in positions of power and positions of influence, I would say beef, do what you got to do. Go in the backyard and fight, hash it out. But you shouldn't grandstand and put that shit on the way, you know, for the world to see, man. I just, I, I don't agree with it. I've had beef with motherfuckers. I, I never put it on front street. Even if they tried to put it on front street with me, I still wouldn't, I still would not give that energy back. I still wouldn't give that energy back because I know it, with, with, a, with a conflict between two individuals, it just takes one person to try to be the bigger person for that shit to end. I, I had an adversary, a couple of adversaries for years, one recent one. Nigga shitted on me on Facebook, totally trashed me, talking mad shit, just over dumb shit too, like over, uh, you know, over some of the silly statuses I, I made, you know what I mean? I think I made a status saying that I could never date a popular socialite in my city. That's too much drama. I'd rather just have like a regular, a regular ass chick that don't do social media. And then I got beef with him over that statement. Stupid ass shit. Whatever. I'm trying to squash the beef in the club. He was a bouncer at the time. Nigga trying to act like he want to fight me, like he was on some drugs. And at the time, I wasn't even drinking enough like that. I was totally sober. But um, what was I saying? So um, after that, years later, I recently ran to the ran into the brother. You know, what I mean, I saw him at a bar because I saw him. Couple times in there, he would never say that to me. But recently, I was saying something, and I saw him, or whatever. So I'm trying to walk past him, whatever, and he, you know, he stopped me, and we he's, he just like, "How you been, man?" And just by that, that's an apology enough to me, because I would rather you shake my hand and we'd be like, you know, fuck it, squash this shit. I don't care what you said, than me just trying to harbor some hatred and wanting to kill like a fellow black person or wanting to do harm to a fellow black person. So we dapped it up, and he was like, "Yo, I see shit through, through a different lens right now. Whatever issues we had, yo, I don't want." to that shit is over and I was like yo it's all good that's all I wanted from the beginning you know what I mean if we're gonna be if we're gonna be cool I mean we don't gotta be best friends or nothing like that but I'd rather us just hash shit out squash shit then us keep going back and forth and just that's, that's some negative dark unnecessary energy man negative dark unnecessary energy and it felt so cathartic man when I shook his hand I, it felt it felt so good to be to be done with the shit yo to be done with the bullshit to be done with the essentially the nothing you know what I mean and that's what a lot of some of these cats need to do man now as far as how they handling the business is Umar scamming to build you know scamming to get money saying he gonna build a school I mean thing, things take time 
this whole people like you know even as far as like Tommy Sotomayor making his movie Fatherless, Fatherless, Fatherless America some things take time some movies take 10 years to make man you know yes Tariq was able to put movies out back to back to back but who knows how much footage and how much work he put into it prior to it actually going down you don't know what's going on behind the scenes it took Avatar 10 years to make some things take a long time some things some projects get scrapped you know what I mean it's, it's been some certain songs that I worked on that it took me like a year to put together because I didn't it didn't come together like the way I wanted it, man. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't put a time constraint. I mean, you can if you're paying somebody, but you can't really, you can't really put a time constraint on how somebody puts together their art, man. Everybody. That's why I love this quote that um, Talib Kweli said in um, Reflections Eternal album. He said, "All the fans be asking me when is the art, when is the album coming out, and I said it's coming out when it's finished." And y'all moan and groan. Y'all love y'all motherfuckers, but yeah, man, like. Too many egos, man. We gotta get to the bottom of why. Why can't we be unified, man? Like a lot of whites and different races, have beef, but you wouldn't even know, man. They beef with each other, and it's funny sometimes when like, like, like some non-black people try to beef publicly. You can tell they trying to imitate black people with how we act. You know, I mean, when we when we, when we get ratchet and foolish and stupid with beef and what have you, you could already tell that they they're imit they're imitating us. That shit is so corny, but it's like, yo, man. That shit is sad. It's very entertaining. I, I will say it's, it's it's highly, highly entertaining. But it's sad at the same time. And I just hope, man, one day we just get a group of um, prominent black individuals, man, that can just get past their egos, man. You know? That can just get past their fucking ego and just work together for the better good, man. Whether you're black, you're Muslim. Oh, that's a whole nother story, topic, too. Like the whole conscious community, like like with, uh, Brother Polite and Brother Tazariak and Sa Netter and Bash, Brother Bashir and just all those guys, all the motherfuckers where they, some are Pan-Africans, some are Nuwabians, some are Hebrew Israelites, some are Christians, some are Muslims, you know what I mean? But they all, the common denominators, they all black and they all, they don't be fighting each other, but they all just be jousting and, and warm with words and they seem like they have no agenda. Their agenda just, I'm smarter than you. I know more comedic, I know more ancient information than you do. And that's it. The shit don't help nothing. Just bump their heads, man. You see so many whites in like different prominent positions. They may have different religions and different creeds. Like look at the government, the House of Representatives, for example. They all might be different religions or whatever, but they all for the sake of the United States government. You know what I mean? Like Illuminati got motherfuckers from all types of walks and all types of religions and creeds, but they 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 come together for the common goal of whatever it is that they're trying to do or trying to accomplish and I think we as black people we need to do that even though we have differences in the way we see things some of us might be left some of us might be right some of us might be sexual some of, some of us might be um chaste some of, some of us might be sober some of us might be alcoholics whatever but like ultimately like we all black and that should be the fucking thing that we push in more than anything even if we have slight differences in, in how we think in our mentalities and ultimately if um Damn, I, I was about to drive the point home. I just forgot what I was gonna say. I said, even if we have different, even if we have different mentalities, and, and, they, and like I said, and, and, and ultimately, it's not that many of us, man. Our numbers are already weak as it is, unless you're um, young Pharaoh and you think there's more people that aren't white in America than there are. <laughs> that shit was ridiculous. I listened to an old debate that young Pharaoh had with Thomas Sotomayor, and that shit was funny as shit. Like he just don't believe in statistics or nothing at all. But whatever, that's a whole nother topic. But um. But yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's just too bad, but as long as it's entertaining and people laughing and clicking on shit, until prominent individuals stop pros um, prospering from being ratchet and niggardly, and it's always going to be ratchet and niggardly. I'll be right back. I got to go get a bottle of wine. I'll be right back.
Oh, I'm back. It took me a while. Hey, man, but it's just pretty sad, man. I don't like the beef. I hate that shit. I hate the feeling of somebody harboring something towards me. Well, I mean, I don't mind being disliked. That's, I'm fine with that. But when somebody like harbors ill will towards me and they're putting out mental energy to the universe to want something bad to happen to me. And we all culprits. I, I've done it. I do it to other people too. I hope I, sometimes I mentally wish bad things on others too. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody perfect or nothing like that. I try not to be that way. But in my mind, if I have a, a, an issue with an individual or if an individual has an issue with me, I'd rather, uh, see, we don't got to be friends. I would rather us, A, we be at peace, or B, we just go our separate ways. You don't exist to me. I don't exist to you. You don't cross my path. I don't cross yours, and that's pretty much it. Like, I, like there's some people that they, 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 they fucking feed off of the, off the, off the drama. Like, they, they enjoy that shit, man. Like, like they, it's almost like sexual, you know what I mean? Like they, I can't wait. There's some niggas in the club. They got problems, and I can't wait to fight. I'm like, you are thinking about fighting dudes, and I'm thinking about getting some buns, I'm like nigga. Because both both are an inclination towards having some type of physical confrontation with another human being. And just one one is aggressive towards another male, and one you know is, is sort of towards the opposite sex or to the same sex. If that's what you're down with. But both of them involve some type of contact, and if I'm going to have any inclination to do have any contact towards somebody, it's going to be towards a female. It's going to be because I'm trying to make love to her, and I want to make love to me, not because I'm going to punch somebody, fight somebody, and touch somebody aggressively. That shit's suspect. I'm good, man. But I mean, I can only hope that things get better. The most, the, the most that I can do is just not be like that. When, when my platform gets bigger, when I get in, certain, in, a, in a better position with what it is that I'm trying to do with comedy and entertainment in general, I just see where my elders failed me and I just don't conduct myself in that manner. That's, that's pretty much that's pretty much all I can do, man. And it's just too bad. This, I said, but the shit is entertaining. I'm about to go watch that video right now. Peace.